Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle Noara from CZT Christina Fernandez Martin. So this is, it's a pretty tangle. And it's one of the uh, ones as I was looking around for inspiration, and I saw this one, there was another one too. And I'm like, you know, I need to get that the fancy fescue out there. And that's been, was it last week? Maybe I lose track. Um, fancy fescue is a name that we, it's this essentially the first, this first stroke. Um, and that's what we just started calling it because it's not exactly fescue, but kind of it's, it's, it's a fancy fescue. Um, if, if you're interested, uh, you can click on my picture or my name. That'll take you to the main page of, uh, the channel and uh, then you can just search for Fancy Fescue. It was within the last couple weeks, I think. Like I said, they all run together. So the first stroke is this. And it's just, I mean, it's one of those, it, it's fun to do just in and of itself. So it's kind of a big curve line that comes back onto itself. So what I'm just going to do here, and like I said, it just comes back and then merge it in like that. Okay. And then, you know, we fill it in. That's, that's what we call it. Regular fescue is actually way different. Um, and again, that's why we call it fancy. So this one takes that idea. And I do like that uh, Christina put in um, on her step out it in two strokes. Because if it's like, if you, you know, if you're not, if you're just looking at the step out and you see this, I don't know. My brain goes, okay, how exactly did you do that? Being a non artist type of person. So I appreciate that she did that. I did that in my version of, of, uh, of the step out as well. And on the, on the fancy fescue. So then after that, we're going to just do, it's, it's kind of like the bottom half of this as if we're doing this stroke, but you know, the first part of it is like hollow bowed or underneath this. And you can take a look at how she did it kind of a little bit down, but then we're like, it's like, we're essentially auraing. Oh, if you saw, I almost made a mark there. I did a little bit, you know, um, coming up with a curve and almost auraing, uh, the line above it. And then another one, same idea. There we go. And you can play with, um, I think on my, yeah, on, well, no, yeah, that sort of did or sort and sort of didn't. You can play with the lengths of these too. Um, in my mind, I was like, like this one is a little bit in from that one. You could play with that. Take a look at the, for more inspiration link. So you can get just that more inspiration. And then the last thing that, um, Nora does is it's simply filling it in. I'm going to, let's see, I'll fill in this first one. I'm going to leave a shine, I think, on it. I can always fill it in afterwards. And if you don't know what the shine is, now when I do fancy fescue, I do a different kind of shine. This one, a lot of times I'll, I'll do this, I'll scribble in uh, the center where I want the shine to be. This time I didn't quite do that. And you can always come back and keep whittling away at how wide that is. And so what she does is she colors in the first one and then fills in the, um, the last one. Nice thing too, with, uh, doing these fill-ins, if you need to, uh, adjust at all, it's a great course correction. You can only adjust out, right? So you can't make this, uh, you know, if you needed to say it was just a little bumpy, you can do, all you can do is make it a little bit bigger and kind of cover up things. Oh, but there we go. You know what? Let me take a little bit off of this side. Maybe a little off of this side. And there we go. And to top it off, let's just a little teeny bit of graphite there and there. And with the tortillon. We'll just bring it up. You can even make it up kind of matching a little bit if you wanted to. Like that kind of makes it look shiny. And then what's nice about this one, just like other other fescues, um, 
Oh, and I like that some of her lines, it, I like to make it like a, a swooping line, but let's do, um, I'm going to make it not, uh, whoops, you know, up and then let's, uh, we'll have it come back on itself that way. I almost forgot to the part. I'm like, I was, I was uh, too involved in, oh, how do I want this to go? So we'll just do it like that. Although. Okay, so here, here's a lesson in course correction. So the, for the length of this, that's a little bit small, right? So what you can do, we're going to just trace over carefully. Let's, let's shape it how I might want it. Okay, I think I can deal with that. And because we're going to fill it in anyway, and this one, guess what? We don't have to have the shine if we don't want to have the shine. Uh, but I, th I could probably fit it in there somehow. Oh, like... Okay, we'll call it right there. And I'll fill in this side. I love to share course correction ideas because too often... Yeah, see, look at that. Okay, now let's put the other ones in. Too often, um, we can get stuck in this thought of, oh, well, it's just supposed to be perfect and that's just the way it is and... You know, if it doesn't come out right, oh no. But we can always find a way. And that is part of the, I mean, my opinion, the fun and the challenge uh, of Zentangle is just that. Do something you don't like. Look, <laughs> scooching things all over the place. Find ways to you know, make it better in your mind. Yeah. All right, we have to add one more. And then, um, neatly, she has some, just some, you know, spirals coming off of things. Let's, uh, let's have another one going this way, and we'll, we'll make this one maybe more droopy. Yeah, it's sad. No, it's not sad. It's just looking down. And I'm filling this one in right away. Um, you don't have to fill them in right away. <laughs> Sometimes you just get too excited. All right. I should say I get too excited. Let's be clear, right? <laughs> Like I said, just super, super cute. And a nice addition to these kind of, um, I don't know, I can't, I kind of call them accent tangles because um, they, they are a nice accent. And so here's, um, we'll add some of those spirals on because I thought they were just adorable. And it's just, you know, like a big print top, if you are familiar with the tangle. And, oh, you could, oh, because that's neat. She put a little ball on the end. You know, just wherever you want. I could have... Oh, no, that's the direction she... I was thinking, I could have them going the other direction, like going up. But this is the direction she has them, and for whatever reason in my head, it's like, oh, well, that's how we do them then. I don't know. It's really funny. But that's it. That is it. Lots of fun. I like the little ball on the end. There we go. Super neat. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to tidy these up. Actually, if when you're coloring, you get like this where it's kind of bumpy, you can still like a course correction. And I'm just kind of tracing over the edge and then working to merge it back in to uh, the, that original line there as much as possible. Like that. It kind of adds some thickening too, some weight at the top, which is kind of nice. There we go. Oh, well, look at that. I did that. Okay, there we go. You know, and I mean, you could do that. You can add weight and you could add rounding. Oh, let's do rounding since I've already, I've gone down this path <laughs> of making that, that one a little bit too thick, but you can do that. It's just, you know, you're cutting off the curve wherever you want. We could, okay, now I'm going down the rabbit hole. All right, this was gonna be a, you know, a relatively quickie, 
clicky. But uh, let's make that curve a little nicer. So you can thicken like I'm doing here on just the one side of your spirals. And it doesn't have to be, it can just be the outer one if you, it depends on what you, what you have and what you have room for. It's a nice course corrector like this, where it was a little bit, uh, a little wonky, still a little wonky, but it's okay. At least it's like wonky with a purpose now. Oops. And there's, see, I, I, I like to, when I can get rid of those little bumps. I try to not make them, but it, sometimes it's just really hard. Oh, but there, you know, and if you hadn't seen me do that, you might go, oh, hey, that looks really neat. And, and later when I look at it, you know, after, you know, a few hours have passed or maybe even a day or something, I'll wonder who did this one because that happens. <laughs> All right. Super neat. Super neat. All right. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button. And if you liked it enough to see more, oh, and I, you know what? I'm, let's add some drop shadows while I'm thinking about it. Um, if you liked it enough to see more, then please click to subscribe to the channel. See, I'm just using what's left on the Torteon and just putting a little bit of graphite just underneath, you know, sort of solid parts. It just adds a little something. It's just neat. Um, in that description section uh, that I mentioned, uh, you will find uh, ways to connect with me if you wish. I have a link to my uh, Facebook page so you can follow me there. My website, you can follow my blog. Uh, if you happen to be on Facebook and want to hang out with a bunch of really neat uh, Tangle Addicts, I have a link to our, our private Facebook group. Would love to have you join us. There are four questions you have to answer in order to gain entry, just so you know. Um, and if you are interested in tangling live with other people, uh, I do sessions twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. <coughs> Excuse me. My time. Uh, here in Michigan uh, at uh, 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Thursdays are free. I have one Tuesday that is a, f a free uh, session. And then the other ones on Tuesday have, have some sort of fee or it's a club members exclusive. So information for all of that, including the club, is on my website. And with that, thanks again so much for watching. And I wish you happy tangling.